Hi folks. So I have no idea if anyone's watching. <coughs> Basically, I can't run the game I normally want to play. So I'm having a break. Um, and uh, I was going to do some coding. And I thought, why not stream it? Let everybody else see what I'm doing. And rip my code to pieces. And um, um, to be honest, writing, this is, um, so I'm going to be writing Minecraft, uh, a Minecraft plugin. Um, it's so easy. And it's so much fun. I just started doing this at the weekend, so I thought I would... Uh, I've got a slightly grander plan than my little test one that I did. Um, but, um, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. So, if you've got any questions about what I'm doing, then please, by all means, ask. Uh, it's been quite a long time since I programmed Java, so my Java's really, really rusty. Um, I normally program in C-sharp when I program, and even then I don't program for a living, so... Not anymore. I used to program Java for British Telecom for about five years. Uh, Simon, what's the plugin about? It's a clock. Um, it's uh, going to be an enormous clock um, and countdown timer and stuff like that. Uh, welcome everybody who is here. Uh, and apologies if you're expecting Train Simulator. It's not going to be a Train Simulator stream, I'm afraid. Uh, the uh, This PC that I'm using here won't run Train Simulator. Not to the point that uh, you can um, uh, you can see it on Twitch anyway. Anyway. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to the flow of doing this, so this is going to be really, really ropey until I get until I get absorbed into what I'm doing, really. Um, it's clock stating time of day. So it's going to be a clock stating time of day, it's going to be a countdown timer, and it's going to be a stopwatch. So that you can get the Minecraft time of day, essentially. Uh, and it's going to be enormous. It's going to be made of big blocks. Um, okay, so I started a plugin yesterday um, to have a look uh, and see what plugin development was like. And I have to say I was really impressed. Now, I've increased the font size of this, so hopefully you can see it. Um, you might have to make your window a bit bigger so that you can see it all. Don't worry about some of the other windows around the outside. If you can't see those, it's not really that important. The tech, it's the bit in the middle, the code, that's actually the important bit. If I make that a bit bigger and make that a bit smaller, there you go. So, so yeah, Minecraft plugins are really, really basic as it happens. Effectively, once you implement the correct interface, I'll extend the base class and implement the interface uh, for listening to events. There's a couple of functions, um, and then you just listen to events and see what happens. So, for example, on player chat is called anytime anyone talks. And then I can do stuff with that. So in this case, what this is doing is it's... Um, this What this plugin I've got here that I did over the weekend does is allows me to add ignore functionality. So one player can ignore another player, so they will no longer see messages from that player. Um, and then there's an anti-capitalization thing in there, so a fix caps function, which means if someone spams loads of, loads of capital letters, um, it will... Um, um, it will see if they use too many capital letters based on a very simple algorithm, <laughs> very basic, uh, and then lowercase the entire thing. Um, Simon, when we upload scenarios for Bristol Cardiff, uh, I will make a note and I will raise that with somebody. Um, let me just make a note. I'll try and get that fixed tomorrow for you because that's an easy fix. Um, uh, Wazerox. I think I saw your message, mate. I've just been a bit busy. I'll try and get back to you. <coughs> hey, breaking good, bro. Right, okay, so. What am I planning on doing here? So the goal here is to start a new plugin. I was going to put it in this plugin, but I thought, you know what? I'll start from scratch, get myself a bit of practice from doing the bit right at the beginning. Um, and perhaps do this one a bit cleaner, because this plugin's a right old mess, frankly. Um... So, I'm going to start off with a, uh, a new project. Um, and this is a Maven project. And I need that. Group ID. Try and remember how to do the basic bits here. That's my package name, which is. Oh, tv. down the mineshaft. Dot um plugins and then this one is uh dtm clock 
Right, that does that. That creates me a new project. You may have been on Danish TV today. Nice one. Right, now I need the project. The POM. Which is all this lot. Now I'm just going to take a copy of this lot and put it in here because I can't be bothered to figure it out again. Already done it once. Only thing I need to do is change the artifact ID to DCM clock. This is how it all pulls knows that it's a spigot plugin. Save that. And that's all that magic and jiggery pokery done. Maven dependencies. Boom! Spigot has appeared on the list. That's all we need to know. Is there going to be a tutorial on the Turian thing? What's a Turian thingy, Jimbo? Uh, easily confused. What developer tool? So Eclipse is the one that Bucket recommend. They have a um, a website um, with a with a tutorial, and they walk you through a lot of the steps that I'm doing. I'll put it on a copy of it on the. Um, uh, I've lost my mouse. Oh, there it is. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they 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 talk about Eclipse in their tutorial, so I'm just using Eclipse. Uh, and it seems to work. That tutorial is beautiful, actually. It really does make life very easy. So I don't need the POM anymore. I'm going to close that DTM.java down just a minute. Create a new class in here, which is going to be TV dot down the mine shard. No, that's the package I need to put that into. I'm not doing this as a tutorial. Not yet. I'm still learning. Um, so if you're lost by what I'm doing, then just, you know, nod your head slowly and pretend. Um, and if you do know what I'm doing and I'm doing it wrong, then just nod your head slowly and pretend. No, no, no. Put the co Let me know if you think I'm making a, a fool of myself. <laughs> right. Um, so, and I'm going to make the main class. Funnily enough, I'm going to call it main. And the super class is going to be... It's a uh, Java plugin. Oh, I can just if I just put Java plugin, I can fix it in a minute. Right. So if I put that in there, that will create the main. I can then hover over that and do change to. Why don't you just give me the option to import? Ah, oh, because we're importing Java plugin. Don't do that. Now I can just import the correct one. Yay! Right. So that's that. Now I've got a couple of methods that I can override, which are on enable, on disable. We'll put those in. Uh, oh, we need a plug-in YML file as well. Let's get these two methods in first, though. So I'm just going to copy and paste these from the uh, website because I can't be bothered to type them. Right. Volvo Scania. What am I developing? A, a plugin for Minecraft. Because uh, it's easy. Well, the principles of developing a plugin are fairly easy, but that's the POM. I don't want the POM. Go away, POM. Where is. Plugin in source resources. I need to create a new. file. Called plugin.yml. So plugin.yml is where you um, tell the bucket server about your plugin, what commands it's got, who did it, what permissions it requires, yada yada yada. So I'm going to start off with the first bit, and this is DTM clock, uh, and it's DTM clock dot main that it has to boot, and then down here we're going to set some commands up. I'm going to copy one over. So these are the commands that you would then be able to type. Volvo Scania, will it be used on down the mineshaft? Possibly. We'll see whether it works or not. If it doesn't work, then no. If it does work, then yeah. I might even distribute distribute it. You never know. Right. Dan, glad you're enjoying Trent Valley. Right, so... I'm not sure what commands I want to use yet. So let's just take those off. And we'll leave it just... In fact, I'm going to leave it with no commands at all for the time being. And I'm going to put uh, get logger dot info um, on I did him no on enable 
called and then in in there on disable called right okay that gets us so that'll get us a little bit of logging so what I'm going to do I'm, g I'm I'm someone who runs the code regularly rather than doing three hours of coding and then trying it all um, and I think it'll make it easier to see what I'm doing and I'll find mistakes a little bit easier and quicker than otherwise. Um, it also helps test the whole life cycle of the development process and making sure that you don't get to the end of it and then realize it'll never work because you forgot to do this. Um, almost 100,000 views on Twitch. Yeah, that's been going up, hasn't it, Dan? It's been going up rapidly. Okay, so I go under here, I do Maven, and I do Update Project because I changed, I don't even want to update DTM clock. Because I changed pom.xml, you have to update the uh, project. Because what you have to remember is that, probably, this probably makes no sense at all, but Maven is a project management system, and Eclipse has its own project management system. Thanks for the follow, Breaking Good Bro. Um, so there's two project management systems, essentially. Maven is not just project management, it's full build cycle and everything else. So the idea is that um, it's... Um, you're, you're updating everything in Maven and then you're sucking it all back up to the Eclipse config. Francois, when did you start? I started about 8.20, 8.30, something along those lines. Uh, probably 8.20, I've been going for a little while now, 13 minutes now. So This is an informal stream, I'm just trying it, see whether anyone wants to watch it. What was Scania? Thank you for the follow. So, having got that, I can now right click, I can do run as Maven install. And then magic stuff happens down here. Custom hitcher, thank you for the follow. Now, don't worry too much about the magic stuff happening down on the bottom. Fail to execute goal. Nah. Why not? Yay, it worked that time. Don't know why it didn't work that other time. That happened to me over the weekend. <laughs> oh, I'm embarrassed now, Francois. Right. So, having made some code. If I bring this window over here, on oh, my explorer, you can see DTM clock, target, and under here I have a DTM clock snapshot.jar. That is a bucket plugin. So if I bring over to my, my little Minecraft server here, I'm going to get rid of the one I was developing at the weekend, drag in my nail test plugin, and then fire up the server. So this is just a little test server no one can connect to. It's just a little private thing. And then bring that over here so you can see it. We just wait for it a minute. If it's successful, then it will do something other than what it just did. You should see something down here when it works, so it's clearly not working. So I'll stop the server and we'll try again. <clears throat> what have I done wrong? I've done something silly. Uh, TV. Ah, oh, no, it's not plugins. DTM clock. It's just DTM clock. Yeah, All right. That'll work a bit better, I think, or at least it'll work a little bit less worse. Let us on so you can test it. Well, it's it's on it's on my my internal network. I haven't got any ports set up. So, and besides, this server will go up and down like a yo-yo. So there's no point connecting to it. Right. So if I pop my two windows back up again, go into plugins delete that one, I've got a new build, copy that in and run and then we'll see what what happens I had so much fun with this over the weekend, trying to, just trying all sorts of things out, seeing what you could do with it and it was, hey look, DTM clock, enable DTM clock 1.0 on enable called and that is that bit of code there excellent, that's a good start that is an excellent start in fact Right, now, the next thing I want to do is I want to set up listeners so that I can listen to things happening in the world. Now, I did all this in the last code I did, and I'm going to cheat rampantly and copy it, 
because that's the sort of person I am. It's one of the things. If you ever write a piece of code once, never write it again. I would write it a way that it's reusable is ideal, and then make it a library. Um, or at least, don't reinvent the wheel. There is just no point reinventing the wheel. And John tree trucking adventure. Normal, awesome. Uh, does DS16 run better on 32-bit or 64-bit? I don't know, if I'm honest with you. All I know is it. Uh, if there's any difference, it's so marginal that I don't think it makes any odds. I think the fact that you can have the full three and a half gigabytes of memory used on 64-bit OS and um, more memory besides for everything else probably means that overall Train Sim can run much better than it does on 32-bit, just in terms of available resources. I'm <laughs> really, it's not a 16-bit app, mate. <laughs> it's a 32-bit app. <laughs> But running a 32-bit app inside a 64-bit uh, environment means that the rest of the app operating system can live outside of that 32-bit environment instead of having to all coexist co inside that 32-bit environment. So while the difference is negligible, there is a benefit to running it on 64-bit, really. Uh, Jimbo, I haven't looked at the your, um, terrain thingy for bridges. I mean, essentially, for doing terrain around bridges, you, you kind of need to flatten the terrain out of the way and then make a 3D model for the bridge. So there's no easy way of doing it, unfortunately. Right, anyway, back to what I'm doing here. So I've implemented Listener and I've said register events, which means that now my plugin here, that's what this is. So register events takes uh, a listener and a plugin. So the plugin is this, and I've also said that I'm a listener as well. You could separate them and make them different classes, but I'm kind of lazy. Um, well, we're scanning, you've been playing TS for three years now. Awesome. On a new PC, is a CPU cooler required? In almost every circumstance, yes. Can I do a tutorial on how to upload a scenario to UKTS? Uh, that's not a bad idea. I'll, t I'll keep a note of that one. Right, okay. I'm getting diverted here. I have I have a fag packet plan, by the way. This is my fag packet plan. So I'm going to have a sign. I've got to do a thread, uh, a runnable, schedulable task, which will update the visuals. Something which will render each individual digit. Then something which will use that to render an entire time. And then the three main things which will then manage a stop clock, a countdown clock, and a time of day clock. Uh, and then the plugin which will then manage the whole thing. So that's kind of my, um, my, my plan. Now, having registered for events, I, what I want to listen for is a sign event. So if I come back here, I did already have a play with that already. Uh, Dan Leeds Games, so what I would suggest is have a read up on FTP side loading for UK Train Sim. I find it much better. Web based uploading is a pain in the neck. The number of things that go wrong with it is ridiculous. And it's not the site's fault, it's all the proxies and ISBs and anything and everything that can go wrong in the way. Whereas FTP side loading is a million percent more reliable. So I'm going to rip this on sign change function here. Now, I'm going to get rid of. Let me just change that and get rid of this. Let me call up Minecraft and just show you what I want this code to actually do. Um, it occurs to me that firstly I need to sort out all the digits, and secondly I need to. Um, <coughs> Hello, why did that? Why did that stop? Oh, it's already running. Duh. Right, now. I will stop arguing. Imagine Matt spadding in Nebworth coding. Yeah, Nebworth the solution. <laughs> right, I'm just firing up Minecraft. And I will connect to m my little server. And then I'll... Um, I will set up a clock the way I want it to be set up and then you'll see what you will see what the code is going to do
Okay, right, so if we imagine that somewhere around here we want to put a clock. Let's say we want to put a clock. I'm going to go into creative mode and let's have. Um, I don't know why I'm really caring about this, the detail of this so much. Right, so I'm going to create a clock. So let's say I want to create a clock a little bit in the air. And I'm going to put a step there, put that there, and then what I'm going to do, let's put another step here just so I can step back a minute. And then what I'll do is I'll create a sign. And then I want to put that sign on there, and I want to call it a timer, and I want to call it Fred1. There you go. And having done that, I immediately want the clock to appear. Yeah, so the clock will appear up there, all the way over there. Nice big clock made of blocks, and that's essentially, um, essentially the job. Um, if someone could tell me how to change it to daytime, I would love to, but uh, I actually have no idea how to do that. Um, so that is, oh, hang on, we're changing to daytime. So this is the goal. I put a sign on there and then what there from all the blocks behind it and along and up I'm gonna turn into a clock. Right, so I don't need that oh, what I do need to do is the digits. Uh right. Oh time set day. Boom See my sign up there? There you go. Okay, right, now, uh, just sorting out a font. Right, so... That'll do. Right, three by three numbers then. So they... Uh, I need a slab. And I need stairs. So in this instance, I do one, two, three, and two. Well, I can fly in this mode. <laughs> Makes life easier. Uh, and then I put a half slab in there. So that's zero. And then one is... One. Two. Three. And then I put a half slab in. That would be a one. So, weather clear. Downfall. Slash toggle downfall. So, set. Weather clear. Well, that's not working. Slash weather clear. Yay! Says changing to clear weather. Right. Number two and three. These are not necessarily good numbers, but. Uh, 
They will do for our purposes. Where did my numbers go off? <laughs> right. So, I need that, followed by that, followed by that, followed by that, and that, and that, 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 that. do. to make a plug-in which will nuke a load of space. Well, well, well dead it exists, I guess. Right. Um, can you make big clock on your plots? Well, that will largely depend on how well this works, how performant it is, if there's any issues with it. In theory, yes. Right, so in theory, yep, that's that one. And then I want that one. Followed by that one, that one, followed by that one, followed by that one, that one, followed by that one. Okay. Uh, where's number four? Baked bean kid. Oh, shots fired. Dave, yes, I am live, uh, but I'm doing coding. I'm not. I'm not in coding at the moment. I need to because I need to get some things sorted out. But uh, I, uh, th once I got that sorted out, I should be coding. Right. So one, two, three, four, except he only wanted that one on there. Fair enough, I guess. Oh, so much easier in creative mode. <laughs> right, okay, so that's four. Five is pretty similar, actually, to something else we did earlier on. Oops. Pretty much exactly the opposite of a two. I bet if I look round this way, it looks very much like a two. Yeah, these numbers aren't even very good, are they? It has to be said. Some of it is because I'm using the uh, of the of the thing that I'm using. But if you can find a better set of numbers, then shout because this was about the best as I could find. Let me have a look for some more. Oh, hello, these are much nicer. Right, okay, let's see what these ones look like. Oh, Volvo's getting you very droll. <laughs> right, one. And then it looks like one of those. And then it looks like one of those. So the one isn't much different. Well, that's fine. I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with the one. Viper Police, uh, Eclipse. That's what I've got in the background there. I'll be doing the clips again in a minute. Right, so two. This is where it starts getting a bit different. Let's see what this looks like. No. No. Better. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, Eclipse is awesome. It really is. I used to use it a lot. A lot, a lot. All right, I see. So I'm going to need to put that there and get rid of that. Excellent. And then I need to put... How do I get you to turn around the other way? Um, what if I put a block there? No. Alright, how do I get a staircase to go upside down? What if I put that one in there? Uh, what is this, Ayrton's? I'm doing programming on Minecraft, but I need to figure out what the numbers are going to look like before I can actually get the rest of the job done. Which is almost depressing, it's cramping my style. If I put that in... That's a half, so I can't put anything in there. Get rid of... no. I'm going to put that one back in there. Get rid of that one. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, that's a bit better than we had before. Right. Let's see what three looks like. test server, shouldn't I really? Just for cleaning out space. Right, I'll do one more and then I'll start coding it and we'll see how we go. Keep going until your number's up. I could count on you, Chris. I knew I could count on you. See? You're not the only one. And there goes the weather. Right. Next thing you know, we're having DTM bingo nights. Ooh, interesting idea. See you later. So make that into a fall. Put that there. Put, whoops, that there, and we'll put. Uh, get out of my way. Get that there. I'll go down under here so that I can reach that, and then I can put you in there. Get rid of that. Under here, I could put you under there. Right. So you go in there. Now in that one, I need to put that and that one that one and that one no nope. up and then put that one back in. Right, so I'm happy with those numbers actually, I'm much happy with those. They look significantly better.
habit recording build offs off stream as you already mentioned. That's a possibility. Um Okay, right, I'm happy with that and I want to get back to some coding, frankly. Um I've got the pattern now for what they want to look like. So what we want to do is have it to where I can make some numbers based on what's in an assign just for testing purposes. So let me come out of that and uh, oops, stop the server. Right. So in here, when I place a sign, I'm going to get a, an event that says on sign chain. So when I put that sign up on the wall, it's going to say, give me this uh, on sign. Uh, Dan Leeds, are the 24 hour highlights going up to YouTube? Yeah, they'll be going up to YouTube ASAP. Uh, I've got quite a backlog of videos again, not even including that lot to go up. So they'll get there eventually. So what I want to create here is a digit renderer thingy. So I'm going to just comment those out for the time being. And a new class and I need a digit renderer so digit renderer if I think about it from the perspective of out here how I want to consume that class I want it to uh, digit renderer or oh, digit renderer uh. Unknown error 235. Oh, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. Much appreciated. Uh, I then want to do digit renderer dot uh, render digit at um, at x y z. And I want to render a zero. Right, so I now need to go and what I can do is having done it from this way around, I can go in and say create method. Boom! And it'll create it all for me. Well, it doesn't create all the code for me, but you know what? Creating the creating the method stub is, you know, at least 0.01 percent of the way there. Um so when I want to render a digit, I want to switch uh, on the digit. And uh, in here, uh, I want to case to see if it's a zero. And if it's a zero, I want to do. Shall I split this into functions? I think I will. So render zero um, x y z z and break. And default. Um, I'm just going to to do on that. Need to put some uh, kind of error in there. You're always forgetting to remind me about Chris. <coughs> you know, the next time you remember, it will be when you're on the lure. <laughs> uh, right. So this is a private function because I don't want anyone to be able to access it outside of this. So render zero int x int y int z and then in here I need access to the plugin so I'm going to put that in the constructor digit renderer java plugin plugin uh, this dot underscore plugin equals plugin and then private java plugin underscore plugin right I need to do the import All right, and don't get, don't give me the cheat sheet way of doing it. Then that would be too useful. Right, let's fix that. So I've now got the plugin. What I do need to do is when I create, when I create it over in here, I need to pass this. <laughs> nice, Amar. Nice. You'll get yourself in trouble. Chat logs and everything. I log everything. I might send a copy to her. 
<laughs> right, so placing blocks in Minecraft world. Um, these are 3x3 three three blocks. And so what I want to do is in the in the the X, Y, and Z I've been given is where the bottom left is going to go. So I'm going to put. So if I do a, um, I go to do a location uh, X, Y, Z, and then in here import the location. See, Eclipse does so much for you. Without Eclipse, I'd be sitting there having to figure out all of these imports and figure just the the bad old days was uh, it was terrible I put the wrong function parameters in the constructor parameters in there oh it needs the world as well does it oh well that's can I get the world off no okay world world let's start world equals world world world. This is the world that we're editing because a Minecraft server can have multiple worlds. So we import world. And now, even without calling it correctly in the first place, I can do that, which will create me a location on that world. Now in here, the second parameter is event.getplayer.getworld. Because that's how I get hold of the world that the player is in. You could do that with a command block. I'm sure you probably could gaming twist, but I'm the goal is to uh, play with programming rather than the pro command block. Simple, really. Lock dot uh, set um, there. Get block that gets the block from the world lock dot set type to material dot stairs and I want actually I should pass the material into here and then I should pass the material into here and I should pass the material into there and then I should just use it there that way it will make a block uh, of any type I want it to right now when I pass this in here I also then want to pass in material dot stairs and let's have cobblestone stairs for the sake of being sakey what does render digit need? Oh. Okay, I don't know what that was all upset about. Where you can ride snowballs. <laughs> um. No, I'm trying to make something which will actually be useful on down the mineshaft specifically. Um. And it just seemed like an an interesting intellectual exercise as well as an opportunity, an excuse to play. Right, so I have now set that to there. Now, what? Ugh, mm. uh, okay, so this is where I've got a slight problem. It can't just be the stairs. I need to pass in three materials. What I actually want to pass in is cobblestone. So that in here I can what number is that? Uh, 
Open the declaration. There we go. Oh. <laughs> So cobblestone is four. Cobblestone stairs are sixty-seven. And then there are slabs. Stone slab. <sighs> um. Piper, please. Am I part of the team for Dovetail Flight School? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm doing um, Train Simulator. Train Simulator. Got stone slab two, pepper slab. So what's the material type then for an actual slab, or is it just down under that? Or is it a subtype of cobblestone? That could be the case. Let's have a look. So it's research time. without the word Minecraft in it. different blocks. That's probably what I'm looking for, is it? No. What? No trains? No, no trains. No computer to run trains on, so... Coding instead. These are all the blocks, yes, but... Cobblestone slab. Ah, it's a 44 colon 3, so what's a... F what's a 44 then when it's at home? Ah, all the slabs are 44 and then you've got subtypes underneath them. So, what I'm going to need to do then is to implement something which t works out what all the different types are. Bleh. Hang on a minute, this this is just harder than I wanted it to be. Hang on. Try. I need to come up with a nice set of numbers that will uh, do what I want them to do. I'm just going to pop onto the live server. Any time you like, right. Jump onto DTM and check, because Haddock already did a countdown timer using uh, command blocks. So if I switch to the RGTPBCT, yeah. TPBCTP, no. This keyboard! Right, so up here, we already have a clock that uses full blocks. Which is much easier way of doing it. So I think what I'm going to do is disconnect from there, jump back onto here. Oh, I didn't start the server up. <laughs> Special! Right, run the server. What texture resource pack am I using? It's Ozacraft, Viper Police. I'm using Ozacraft. Right. This will get more exciting once the digits are done. Once the individual digits are done, everything gets a bit more interesting. 
So if we were to say that a one is not with those blocks as anything, it's I mean that kind of looks like a one. What does a two look like then? Uh, forgetting what a two looks like in t at all. That's not good. It always happens. So that's a two. Oops. No! Stop pressing the wrong button! <laughs> Seriously! <clears throat> Okay, that's not totally hideous. These aren't looking too bad, and these are simple. They don't need any special um, blocks, which is going to make my f a lot easier and a lot more flexible. So, what's our number four going to look like then? We're going to get up one up there. Let's go all the way up the top. No, probably not like that. Actually, if I was to go that one. The Mr. P Guru, Mr. PC Guru. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Much appreciated. Right. That looks like a four. I can always come back and change the renderings of individual numbers later on. It's not the end of the world. That's a five. Oops. Put that back actually, yeah. So two kind of works three, four, five. Six. I think I'm overcomplicating this. I can just use seven segment display type mechanism for this. I don't have to do anything silly like that. Oh yeah, this is looking better now. Programmer's cure is codeine, yeah really. Lots of aspirin. Right, that's six. Seven. These digits aren't anything fancy, but they'll do the job for a clock. Seven. It. Nine. Did we do zero? We didn't do zero! A crime has been committed on zero. Mathematicians everywhere rejoiced. Right. Zero is ugly. Horrible number. Causes all sorts of problems. Especially for programmers. Right. Right, and that's a zero. Alright, I'm happy with that actually as a font, as a 
a sort of a 3x5 font, I think that will do quite nicely. <sighs> so, kind of what I need to do now is I'm going to take some screenshots of these just so that I can remind myself what they look like. So, save that. Save that. Save that. What am I stuck on? Oh, the ground. Damn the ground! Right. That's taken screenshots. Right. That's all I wanted to do on Minecraft for the time being. Okay, that's got my screenshots. Shut down the server. And uh, now I will go and open the images up so I can refer to them. Because what I want to be able to do is when you place the sign, you'll place it on a block. And then I want to make the clock out of the sign that you've placed it on so that you can change the materials that the sign that the clock is actually made out of um, so what I want actually is I want uh, a material one and a material uh, material two and I need to pass material one and material two in here material material one uh, material two Right, and then in here I'm going to pass cobblestone as the background. Um, dot uh, quartz as the foreground. Do I play Rocket League, Dan? I certainly do. Rocket League's awesome. Right. So that's got that. Now what I want to do... I want to set this to material uh, one. Um, I'm going to make myself a little helper function actually uh, to set block at x, y, z to material, material. And then that can do that stuff because that's going to get repetitive and boring, and I hate repetitive and boring. No one likes repetitive and boring code. Now that is complaining because it's never used, which I'm about to. So set block x, y, z to material 1. So I think x will move us along one way. So set block x plus 1 at the same y and the same z to material. And set block x plus 2, y, z to material. Um, I then want to set block x, y plus 1, z material. Set block x, y plus, no, x plus 1, y plus 1, z material 2, because that's background. Set block x uh, plus 2, y plus 1, z material 1, because that's the other half of the O. Now I need to do that three times. One, two, three. So that's going to be plus two, plus two, two, plus three, plus three, plus three. And then in this one, whoops, it's the same as the first one. So this is going to be plus four, plus four, plus four. And that's going to use material one. No. No, it's just... What have I done? One, one, one. That's one, that's one, that's... Whoops. Ah! Zero, one. And that's one, and that's one, and that's one. So that'll create me a zero. Everyone needs a zero. We're doing the zero first here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it to where I can tell in the sign what digit I want to render. So what I'm going to do is say if um, event dot get lines dot there's uh, so an array I think so uh, dot equals zero then I will render that uh, else I will get logger 
for info. What are you playing at full? Right. Good. Let's try building that. Why is that complaining? Importing DTM dot ticker. Go away. Right. Let's run it then. Build it and put it on there then. <sighs> Are we built? No, it's complaining about no compiler again. Try again and this time find the compiler. Oh, would you look at that? Right. Let's pop up my two windows so as the same as before get rid of DTM clock and put DTM clock snapshot dot jar in there and then run the server can you guys see alright is this even remotely interesting or there's 42 of you watching which is to be honest 42 more than I was expecting if I'm completely honest Right, it initialized OK. What I will do is I'll leave this on the screen so you can see it. Do you want to see more coding streams? What what would you like to see coded? Tell me what you want to see. I don't because I don't code for a living anymore, I don't really do it enough, so this is a really interesting opportunity to actually give it a go. I appreciate you prefer train sim, Francois, but uh, I prefer coding on an engine for, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, time set day. So, this is where it all goes horribly wrong. So let me go to here. Kill that. And we'll put a sign up here and put a little zero in it. What did it do? It did that. That was pretty much not what I needed it to do. Don't worry about those. They were from earlier experiments. The sign itself didn't appear. What if I put one in there? Oh, it said, what are you playing at full? So that bit worked. So if I put a zero in there, what's it doing? What have I done wrong? Let's go and have a look. Oh! Uh, I wonder if it's because... That's the X, the Y and the Z of the sign. So I actually want to render the zero... When I render it, I want to render it one higher than the sign. In fact, I'll render it two higher than the sign. Because it's um, failing, because it's right next to me. <laughs> it just downloaded Eclipse. <laughs> At Moricom, this computer can't really run games on stream. It's it can run games perfectly happily if I'm not streaming them, but it can't stream them. The addition of OBS just. Um, it gives it heart failure. Minecraft is about all it can cope with. Right, so what I've done now is I've moved what it's doing to be higher up, uh, and we'll see whether or not that makes a difference. Um, I need to go into plugins, get rid of that, move that over, and um, run the server. I kind of wish there was a way I could just do it without re without reloading the server all the time, but there's nothing reliable about there. Right, that's that one. So now fire up Minecraft. I don't know why I don't just leave it running and disconnect it from the server. That would save some time. I should do that from now on. Uh, noob, the usual computer is a games machine. 
a modern one. This is a seven year old games laptop. Right. Multiplayer. Connect to the little server. So let's uh, blast that. Put a sign there and put a zero on it. I still only did two. Going on! But it didn't wipe the sign this time, which is a good sign. <laughs> I'm confused about what it's doing now. Let's just disconnect. Stop that. Why are you booting me out, Minecraft? Oh, it crashed. Nice! Excellently done. How come I'm not doing it on the main games machine? Uh, the one that I was borrowing died, uh, and the laptop is busy doing other things, so there, there is nothing for me to use at the moment. I'm trying to get a, get a machine bought, but that doesn't happen overnight, um, so I'm hoping I will be back. If I have a plan to get back streaming again, you'll just have to bear with me, I'm afraid. X, Y, Z, so Y plus 2. When I mean, it did go up, so that's fine. So when we went into render digit, we passed an X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, set block, said set the X, Y, Z that we passed in, which should be the sign plus 2 up, get that location, get the block, and set the type to material. Double X, double Y, double Z. Hey Taylor North, welcome. Don't you just hate it when stuff that should work doesn't? What am I doing wrong here then? So render zero is going to go in there. It's going to do X. That's like that's doing that one, that one, and that one, and not really doing anything else. Let me tell it to log what it's doing. Get logger. Nope. Plugin dot get logger info. Uh, Z. Right, that will now log everything it's doing, so we can see if the coordinates are making sense. Is this the coding that looked impressive in theory? <laughs> <coughs> There's definitely a certain amount of in theory to it. Apparently an awful, not an awful lot of practice. Retest that. Get one digit working, we should be okay to get the rest of the digits working, and then we can get the clock rendering. Welcome, Meep. to put the build in the place. Get my learn on, because I can make it to where Maven automatically dumps the, the jar file in the right place. Which would just save this tedious step. No reason why you can't run Minecraft with an Eclipse either, thinking about it. Am I coding cars in Minecraft? No, I'm coding clocks in Minecraft. Right, so if we look at the log in the top left, and we overlay that, we 
are looking at 203 so that's 80 81 82 and 83 didn't work and that's 203 oh hang on it's done the 3 in the middle it's done the three in the middle. It's not the it's the quartz ones it hasn't done. Ugh. What have I done? So when we cast in material one, material two, material one, material two, pass the material, we set it, material goes in correctly, and I passed in material at quartz, material at cobblestone. So material two is working. Material 1 is not. So let's make it a different material. Let's make it bedrock. Bed, uh, bed block? No. You misunderstand me, sir. Um, brick. Make it brick. You want to plug in that allows you to construct a nuclear device. Actually, it'd be quite easy. Uh, Ribku, yeah, there'll be no TS tonight. Um, creating something which wipes out large portions of the server would be very easy. Because <clears throat> world, world guard, world edit can already do it. You just set the block and say zero out. So creating something which does the same thing would be uh, trivial, but not fun. See. Because World Guard can already, the World Edit can already do it. Right now, I've changed the material type because there may be something funky about quartz that I need to deal with. Train sim, Twitch plays, Twitch plays coding. Yeah. Can you just imagine that? Right now, I want you all to write some code for me. <laughs> Evil grin. Plugins. Delete. That there. Run the server. As you can see, making a plugin actually the, the the fundamentals of how you get stuff into Minecraft are really easy. Actually, making it do something useful that's that's you know that's down to you or me in this case. But I was going to do this anyway, so hence why I thought you know what I could let you share my pain. Right, so. If I now connect to that, come back down to here and put a zero in there. Oh, yeah! We can have zero. Now, it looks like it's ruined it, done it the wrong way round. So instead of adding to the X, we need to subtract from the X by the looks of it. Because if I look at the overlay, yeah, the X is going up as we go left, so I need to make it left uh, negative um, for this example anyway. Um, class make T. <laughs> nah, actually, if you're going to make a class make T, you need to make the things that go into it. Um, you need to do an option. I guess you could make them nullable. Because, you know, you might not want sugar, you might want two sugars. Um, that's getting too silly. Right, so that's a good step in the right direction. We can have zero. Um, but what I need to do is in the digit renderer, I'm going to make it to where it is x minus 1, x minus 2. Right, that will now make the zero go that way around. So now let's try rendering a 1. So that'll be render one. Those are my two materials. Case one, render one, x, y, z, material one, material two. Break. <laughs> that'll do, Steve. <laughs> so, um, the 
bottom row is f the same. The next row I'm going to do material 2, f material 1, material 2. Yeah, so 1 is where I want the digit to be. And this is going up the middle. 2, 1, 2. This one is 2, 2, 1. And then this one is uh, 1, 2, 1. I'm trying to visualise in my head what a 1 looks like. Stephen Jam, you got track hat? Yes, track hat is very good, isn't it? Right, okay, we shouldn't have to make any changes to this because it, oh no, it already, I need to say what it is. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get f clever. No, I can't get clever just yet. Uh, let's keep it simple. It's not pretty code, but uh, if it equals 1, then render digit 1. In fact, I'm going to just put the rest of them in now. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This code isn't staying, it's a hack so that I can test all the digits. I stressed add because it's not good code. Nine, uh, eight, seven, six. Never write anything specific like this. You always want to write code in generics. But because this is throwaway anyway, I'm not going to bother putting the effort into it. <laughs> nice, Steve. <laughs> right, okay, let's see if we've got a one. If this works, I might get the rest of the digits in and we'll try them all at once. Could I not use a loop with a switch to step through that? Um, I probably could, but I'm going to write a digit, uh, a number renderer or a time, a clock renderer, which will do all that for me. And I don't want to write the clock render until I'm doing it step at a time. So, um, just want at the moment. I just want to be able to test each digit individually, and then what I'll do is I will uh, uh, I'll write the uh, the number sequence renderer um, next, which will then do it in a more code efficient way, and then all this code will disappear. We've made the plugin. Need to stop the server, otherwise you can't put a new plugin in. I mean, to be honest, you could do it the other way. I could do the clock bit first, but I don't like writing too much code that I can't test. Um. Oh, MSI Ultimate Realism Day, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Phil. Right. Connect. Stephen Jam, this is going to be a, like a big countdown timer, so there's the zero. So if I now go into here and make that a one. Hello, that didn't quite work, did it? Oh, I see why, because the other the other digit was still there. Remember, I switched them round. All right, let's try it now. So if I put the zero in there, that now looks like a zero, correct? And if I put a 1 in there, I've got something wrong here. Close but no cigar, my friend. Close but no cigar. Digit renderer, what have I got? I'm just going to look at it. Ooh, I'm missing a follow. Saw 182K15, thank you for the follow. Right, let me set the time today. And weather clear. Right, stop being annoying. So I got all ones, then I got 212, 212. Then I got, ah, uh, should be 112. 112. And then I should have uh, 212. Let me just double check that. Br bricks are the digit. Bricks are the digit. Okay. Let's disconnect from that. Stop. Right, let's fix that one. And then we're ready to go.
Coding Simulator 2017. You have to write it yourself, absolutely. Right, so I've fixed render 1, so now I'm going to write render 2. Feels like I should probably put these in a data block and read from the data block and just have one bit of code, but... <sighs> <laughs> Um, no, um, custom hitcher, I'd got them the wrong way round. They were in, uh, the twos and the one, the material twos and ones were inverted. Um, so a two is all ones, two and a one, all ones, a one and two twos, all one. That's two done. And three is ones, two, two, one, all ones, two, two, one, all ones. That's three done. is uh one uh two two one two two one 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 two one one two one that's four done it's probably a bit boring to watch we'll get it done in a minute so when we get the clock going and we use digits it'll get a bit better Steam and Jam. Um, if people, s uh, if if you send any scenarios that you that you were interested in being part of the core pack to um, PJT uh, to fill, then um, I'll come up with a way of playing them because I, I do want to play them. Right. So five is one 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 followed by one two two followed by one 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 followed by two two one followed by one one one. That's five done. Rendering it digit from the bottom up. Yes. Six, which is one one one. Uh, one two one. One one one. One two two. One one one. That's six. Seven is going to be two, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, 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 one. Seven. Nearly there. Two to go. Well, eight and nine to go. Da -dum -dum eight. Which is one, 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 followed by one, two, one, followed by one, 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 followed by one, two, one, followed by one, one, one. <laughs> one, two, one, 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 two, one, two, one, two, one. <laughs> And render nine, uh, which is one one one, two two one, one one one, one two one, and one one one. So ah, these numbers are all the same. Right, two three four five six seven eight nine, two three four five six seven eight. Nine. Now what we do after we fix this bit is we then test to see how many are broke. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. And that bit's all done, so we should be able to get each of the digits now to render. One as stall.
Oh, build success. Check that out. Right. Plugins. What? 6k jar already. It's getting there. <laughs> I think a, a lot of the code is probably in there. A lot of the bulk code is in there. I can't imagine the rest of it's going to be enormous. Right. He says famous last words. Fire up the new server. Right, so. So, zero is right. One is right. Two is five. Dull. Three is right. Four. Is right. Five is two. <laughs> oh, I'm special. Six is that. Seven is that. Eight is that. And nine is that. Excellent. Well, I'm actually you'll have enough space for that. <laughs> yeah, 6k. I oh, don't know, no, it's a bit of a monster, to be honest. Right, now, that's good. So, other than 2 and 5 being the wrong way round, so much for visualising things in my head. Just make sure I am passing the right numbers in. The number of times I would go in, fix it to where, assuming that the render code was wrong, and then... Um, go into um, and realise I was actually telling it to do a 5 with a 2. That I've done that before now. Right, let's fix swap 2 and 5. Right, let's fix those two. Right, so we've got all the digits now. That is an excellent start. That is an excellent start indeed. Now, in here, I now want to create a clock. So I think at this point I actually need to create some other classes that I want. So I'm going to create a uh, stopwatch clock. I'm going to create a countdown clock I'm going to create a time of day uh, clock am I going to do the flashy colon in the middle? I, I might do I might do uh, I need a time render time renderer so time renderer is going to be instantiated by the clock. So I'm going to start off with stopwatch clock. Public stopwatch clock. We'll need the plugin and it will need the world because the other ones need those. Again, equal plugin world. Oh well. Plugin. Oops, underscore. And then fix those. You're welcome for the codes, guys. Uh, you should always also forward your thanks on to Dovetail, who generously donated the prizes. So, when I s create a stopwatch clock, I'm going to initialize it to, which will set the time to zero. I'm going to start it, I'm going to stop it, here I'm going to have the, <laughs> I can't remember what the, uh, what is, uh, 
start is going to take uh, system dot current time millis. We're digging into the depths of my knowledge of Java at this point, trying to remember. So start time is that. It needs an underscore on the front. I use a, um, a coding standard so that all the private variables always also have an un always have an underscore at the front of them. That way, when you're you're, pro you're in the code, you can immediately see what is a class private variable versus a local function variable, or a parameter or something. So that will set that, um, and it will say uh, started equal true, and then this one's going to say started equals false. Uh, that'll be running actually, not started. <coughs> We're going to have running. So initialize is going to set running to false. Hey there, friend Stalin. Welcome. I put bool in there. Too much C sharp. So what that means is out here, where I can comment this lot out and delete it later on, when it's proved its value, I, I want to create a stopwatch clock uh, which passes in this and event dot get player dot get world. Yeah, I'm get I get all the, a lot of the types mixed up. It's like st the string with lowercase s and a capital S. They're subtly different in very subtle ways, and in C sharp it's irrelevant, but in Java it's d this much slightly less irrelevant. <laughs> Fringe Stalin, I'm coding uh, rather than because um, I thought I wanted to have a play with doing this coding tonight, and I thought you know what, why not bore you all to tears with it while I'm doing it. Right, so we've created a stopwatch, and then I want to do a stopwatch dot initialize. Right. So what that wants to do is to say my current time. So I'm going to in here. <coughs> this needs a bucket runnable. So this is the thing which is going to count. So I want to have a time updater. This is a bucket runnable. So what? That is right, isn't it? Let's go and have a look at what I did before. Dicker! Oh, it extends bucket runnable. This is an abstract or a base class, not an interface. Now I should be able to implement it. Yep. And you need to add the unimplemented method, which is that one. Poor to tears. <laughs> So I've got time update. And when I initialize, I want to pass the clock. So I'm going to extend a create. Oh, not in there. I'm not. I'm going to create a base class called abstract clock. And in here, these are all going to extend. Do they need to extend now? It's an interface. Implements. Uh, I'm going to borrow a bit of C sharp because I like the idea of um, prefixing interfaces, which Java is wholly against.
think, if I'm getting that right. So count that clock into fence. I clock time of day implements. I clock. French styling? No, there'll be no train sim live for a while, mate. Oh, abstract. <laughs> Let's get rid of that class. Create a new interface. Uh, I clock. And so time of day clock implements that. So my stopwatch clock implements that. So now when I create my time up data, I'm going to pass in the uh, I clock that it's going to update. Be so careful typing the word clock, it's so easy to mistype it and type something in really unpleasant. Or oh, certainly inappropriate for such a stream. Now, what the stopwatch clock needs to do, having initialized itself, is it then needs to do um, private time updater, time updater. I might come back afterwards and think, oh, how did you structure it like this? I'm kind of making this up as I go. Uh, time update says new, time updater this. And because this implements I clock, I can get away with that. Time updater dot run task later. Run task timer. That'll run it synchronously, which is what I need. I need the plug-in. I need the delay. So I'm going to run it every second, which is every 20 ticks. So that's it. Every tw in 20 ticks, run it, and then in another 20 ticks, run it again. Um, and then this needs to cancel the thing running in the background. So what this is going to do is run task timer is going to tell the scheduler inside Minecraft to tick this um, this function here once a second. This will get executed. Yeah. The reason for having the interface is I want to have a generic way of pulling back the thing to be displayed essentially. Um, So in this instance, every time this thing ticks, what I want to do is get um, the... So I know what the... I want to ask it what time to be displayed. I don't want to get clever. Um, so stopwatch clock in here is going to have a thing which is... I'm trying to remember how time works in Java. <laughs> Let me just call up my, my good old friend Google. the thing, I spend so long, I think there's a time class, isn't there? I spent so long in C-sharp, this stuff is just instantly off the top of my head. Oh, it looks like date might have it. Time? <laughs> John, your legacy at Rolls Royce was inheriting a 3,000 line cobalt programming and leaving it a 48,000 line program. <laughs> that sounds like a good deal. Yeah, okay, there's a time class I can use. Right, so in here, um, time, get time to show. Timed, uh, time equals new time. T let me implement import those bits. Not oh not SQL. Oh, maybe there isn't a time. Maybe there isn't a time. Well that's just a pain.
But you know what? I don't know if that's actually a problem. Do I care if that's Java or SQL at time? If it does the job. Let's use it and see how far we get, shall we? Feels like a bad idea, but pfft. So this wants uh, an hours, minutes, and seconds. So uh, one, two, three. We'll populate those in a minute. What I need to come up with? Oh, it's even deprecated. All right, let's not do that. <laughs> If I actually return it as a long, I can convert it. Yeah, that'll make a lot more sense. So, now is system not current time millis. Uh, and diff is... This is a stopwatch, which means I want now minus start time. So that gives me the number of milliseconds. And I want that. That's got have an underscore. Divide by a thousand because I only want seconds. And if I return diff, I never like doing return and then an expression because then it's harder to debug later on. All right. So get time to show returning along is what goes into here. And now this needs to clock dot get time to show long is that. Now I need to work out it's just date, isn't it? And this is date time in C sharp, no. Okay, so there is a date. Java.util date. I thought there was. Why were you not showing me it? I import it myself. Java.util.date. Uh, date equals new date. Time times thousand. I realise that that doesn't make a lot of sense. In fact, yeah, let's return it in minis. <laughs> uh, da -da -da, where's the stopwatch clock? Wiping his company with one line of script. What? How would that work? How exactly would that work? Now I've got a load of code that doesn't compile because it all implements an interface that doesn't exist. Oh, sorry. It uh, it doesn't implement. It actually doesn't actually implement the interface. It just declares that it does. So I shall re put some dummy implementations. I'll format C code on. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. I remember somebody, uh, somebody at a previous company, what they did was, um, and this is really, really geeky, but um, so you probably won't get it uh, unless you know Unix, but he did um, rm minus rf dot star, which includes dot, 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 slash, star, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, star. It includes, basically, it basically started re deleting everything off the entire file system. Uh, I think that's probably what Steve just said, actually, because R says recursive and F says force, and you never hear anything back from it. It just doesn't return. It, that was what bothered him. It sort of after about 60 seconds of it not returning, he's, he's that should have returned almost instantly. Control C, oh, and then he got basically told to uh, wipe the uh, to, to wipe the system and rebuild it for the, that was his job for the next day. <coughs> It's easy done, though. It's easy done. It's so easy done. 
Right, so time updater has now got the time from the stopwatch and we've got that date. Now what I want to do is figure out what my digits are. So date dot get hours. I want hours really, I want minutes, don't I? And and sec uh seconds. Uh oh, I see it's it's deprecated. What do you want me to use? Oh yeah, mm, because it's all this Gregorian stuff. Um, simple date format. Need to use the Gregorian calendar thing, I think. <laughs> this is so much easier in C sharp. Can't wait for Windows 10 with plugins on Minecraft because having got used to Java, having got used to C sharp, sorry, this is painful. So that's essentially the code I need. There, it's that. So we have a calendar. We have a Gregorian calendar. We create the date time based on the time that we retrieved there um, and then we put that into my calendar right I just need to get that PDT thing so Korean calendar takes a time zone to work out what that is I know the one that I always used to have real, a real fun with um, in um, in Linux. If you want to kill a task and it's being annoying and it won't die, you can um, kill dash nine and the task ID. On deck Unix, if you kill dash nine, it ignores everything else you've typed and shuts the server down. <laughs> So the number of times I accidentally sucked down servers at BT was um, <coughs> embarrassing, frankly. It didn't help that I was using a Linux, but I, I, I had a deck alpha on my desk just because, you know, I, I happened to get it working again and I kept it on my desk. <laughs> um, and I had it installed with Linux. So I was connecting to deck Unix boxes with Linux. <laughs> it was a recipe for disaster. Calendar.get. Uh, and it's on some Java doc. What am I making? I'm making a um, a clock for Java. See you later, Ninja Joker. Want. I want the actual Java doc. That's the Java doc tool homepage. Bah. Wow, Java doc used to be a lot easier to find. Is it built into this by any chance? Not usefully, no. Crikey. Yeah, the 
failed. Yes, but where is the list of fields, you fool? Oh, I see. So is it calendar dot minute? Let's see what that does, shall we? And int seconds equal calendar dot get calendar dot second. At this point, I'm quite inclined. Now we know why the Steam server dies. <laughs> Is it going to have countdown facility? Yes, um, John. It, the idea is it will have count up, count down, and the current time on the Minecraft world. Don't need time zone. Oops. Definitely need that bit. Yeah, you've probably found. I've actually found it. Actually, but it, it is built into Eclipse. <laughs> should have figured really <laughs> uh, I want to have access to the plugin in here as well because otherwise I can't log anything and that now I need to import it and then in here I can say plugin dot get logger dot info uh, min uh, time updater min mins seconds seconds before we start calling back and updating the world let's see whether or not we're actually getting the right answer so that will just pulse once a second and log something out with based on what the time is there is this for build off yeah so the last 10 seconds and then you ball noises. I was thinking as well that I could set it or get it setting off fireworks and things as well, but let's let's get the clock working first. <laughs> and I need to pass in plug in. Okay. Right, we've done a bunch of coding. Let's see whether or not we've got something which does anything at all. Uh, PGT 1974, the, s the industry standard shortcut is Control z for undo. Control z for undo, redo, Control y In 99% of cases, that's the way that it works. There's, I don't think I've found many tools which do it a different way, and I generally don't use anything that decides to be awkward like that. Right, let's run that. Lloyd, where's Healy's? May I ask you what program you're coding in? I'm programming in Java, um, and I'm programming uh, a Minecraft plugin using Bucket API. So we have a server. So now what should happen is when I place the sign on here, regardless of what I put on it, nothing will happen. That's awesome! Okay. On sign change, creates a stopwatch and then does initialize. So that sets that up. That says initialize. Oh, I never call start. <laughs> start watch dot start. So I can make a shutdown counter. Yep. 
can make any sort of counter. This is going to be a generic counter system, so you can create multiple counters, multiple clocks. You'll be able to use commands like slash start counter. You'll be able to set up redstone to start them and stop them. All kinds of stuff is, is where I want to get to. Uh, but the first job is to actually make a clock work. Um, get it built. Yeah, I mean Word, lots of apps, pro whether they're programming apps or um, or anything that has like Notepad uses Control Z, but note remember note note that Notepad will only undo one operation and then it undoes the undo. GG Microsoft. Right. Put clock on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So that's got the timer starting. Fortunately, <laughs> nothing will ever stop it at the moment, other than shutting the server down. Let's just make sure min goes up at the correct time, and then, then we're in good shape, and then we can actually start um, getting it, rendering them on the uh, on, on the screen, or in the world, even. Sublime text, I know a number of people use it. I'll have to take a look at it. I've always used Notepad++. What is the Minecraft interface? I'm using Bucket API, PBASC. Is it showing on the sign? Not yet. No, I mean, the sign won't change. The sign is just how you define the clock. Excellent. So, it rolled over to minutes correctly, so... The under the underneath part of our um, clock is working. Um, so time updater now needs to get a little cleverer because now I need to do a time render, and the time render needs to pass in minutes and seconds. I'm going to have the same time render instance. I'm not going to keep creating new ones. That just messes up the just this, the garbage collection. Uh, so time renderer, time renderer. While we in construct, I'll create a new time renderer, and I will pass in plugin. That probably needs world as well, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, which means you need the world. Right. So time renderer needs a constructor. Plugin is plugin. World is world. Ivan Java plugin. Plugin. I do actually talk to myself when I'm coding. It's really I get told off quite a lot. Please shut up. Right. Why don't I get a plugin called Essentials? Um, it overlaps with some of the other stuff that's on there, and uh, to be honest, it's just a mess trying to figure out what what would and what would and wouldn't cause problems. And I don't want an enormous plugin library. Uh, I want individual plugins and um, to do the things that I want. I've got no mug in here. I might have to nip off and get a mug in a minute. This is bad news. Right, so I've just broken some code because I added an extra parameter. You've got the world, so you can pass the world on. 
that hopefully makes you happier. No? Java plugin world is missing the type world. Huh? What? Ah, now you're okay. Now you're behaving yourself. Right, so that passes in. So now time updater creates a time renderer and then in here I can, after the log, I can say time renderer dot render time means seconds. Yeah, the problem with Essentials is that I found out about it too late. If it was the first plugin I'd found out about, I would have started with that and then built around it, but it was too late and there's too much. <sighs> As Steve says, yeah, when you're, if you're learning to code now, it's so much easier. Um, a, you've got massive UX, you've got superb platforms like Eclipse on Java, Visual Studio, uh, Express Edition on C Sharp, um, and masses of tutorials, loads of videos. Cheers, Trash Shadow. Enjoy. So I'm going to render time. So time renderer needs a render time int mins int seconds function, which makes that happy. Now, in order to render time, I'm going to use the digit renderer. So I'm going to create the digit renderer here so that I only have the one and then create it. Except that needs parameters which are the plugin and the world. Have I ever programmed things for Apple? No. No, I have I've never had an Apple device. Um so I've programmed for most other platforms though. Including Android. Where is TS Train Sim Guy? I haven't got a machine that will run TS, I'm afraid. So um, I was going to do a bit of coding, and I thought I would s share share the pain, sorry, sl uh, the fun uh, with everybody else. Oh yeah, that um, Royal Scotsman livery is gorgeous. Now, rendering time. So in order to use the digit render, I need coordinates. I've not passed any coordinates in. So back here, I create a stopwatch. And what I need to do is to pass in that coordinate. Which is that lot. So stopwatch dot set uh, bottom left as that lot stopwatch dot set now this is where I can get a little bit clever as well because if I look at the materials behind or the blocks behind the sign I can make it to where that is what defines what the digits look like so if I um, was to uh, location lock one is the location of the sign so I want new location that, but I'm going to make it Z plus one, I think. Implement that, and lock two will be Z plus two. And you don't like that because you need to know the world. Event dot get player dot get world. So that makes you happy, which means I can then s do stopwatch dot set material uh, set main material or set for material, yeah that's better, to lock one dot get block dot get 
type. That gets me the value of whatever's on that block. And then stopwatch dot set back material lock one dot get lock dot get type. So that gets me those. I need now have to set those things in there. So I'll set bottom left. Uh, int x, int y, int z. And here I need set for material. I need public void set back material. Yeah, material. Hopefully that's made you happier. Get type. Get time. Ah, because you don't know about that. Good. Oh, and that needs to be location 2. Right, let me just check that coordinate stuff was right. Just something about maroon makes trains look awesome. Absolutely, that just looks stunning. That the uh, class sixty six. It's one of the reasons I always like the West Coast Railway livery. There won't be a test on this, will there? Yes, there will be a test on this. Actually, yeah, there certainly will. <laughs> yeah, that's Z plus. So that's plus one, and that's Z plus two. So that's fine. See, one of the things I like about programming Minecraft is I've always liked programming robotics or programming anything which interfaces with the real world. Because it's like your program has got tendrils that are reaching out and touching the real world, um, not just the electrons on the screen or something. Um, it's like I'd spent a long time in my career looking at uh, doing telephone system and stuff, which was awesome fun. And Minecraft is a bit like that. It's got the sort of the robotics and implement. Zaragonar, I'm going to eventually make it to be player relative, um, but I'm starting off with it like this. And I'll, I'll expand and enhance it as I go, but yes, the idea is you'll be able to say which way you want it to be, but at the moment it's fixed. <coughs> I'll probably regret that, but... Last Friday I got 1,001 followers. Well done, Rubku. Well done. Got your thousand followers. That's awesome. Now all this needs to do is store it. And I want... Uh, so all these need to do is store them. Had it. What am I building? I'm building a clock. It's a bit like the one that you did in command blocks, but I just thought I'd have a go at doing it in code. Right. I've only been going a couple of hours on it. Right, so I've got all of the materials now. That says so I need to tell the time updater about all of its stuff. So time updater dot set left X Y Z 
that. Pistons. Yeah, yeah, okay, pistons. <laughs> uh, set back. Material. Right, so that goes into time up data. A lot of copy and pasting here. I'm feeling like I'm missing something, but I'm sure I'll think about it later when I sit back and think about what I've done. Right, so in here, I'm just going to pull the code across from here because it does exactly the same. Oh, all that copy and pasting. Oh, I feel dirty. Right. So when I ask to time render or render the time, I need to tell it the X and the Y and the Z and the for material and the back material. So that now tells time renderer what to do. So, if means is less than zero, then I need to do a leading zero. Um, then render, uh, I need to keep my current x, so... Here, so I want to uh, digit renderer uh, dot render digit current x y z zero for material back material and current x plus equal four and then I want to Otherwise, I need to get two digits, which means I need to split them out with a div, I think. Uh, and mins units is mins percent ten. Uh, so then that would be that, that, so that goes in there, that goes in there, and then the same thing basically for seconds. Uh, and what I am going to do is between there, current x plus equal 4, move that across a bit longer. Was it plus or minus? Let's go back to digit renderer. It's minus, not plus, with the way I'm doing it at the moment.
Right, for better or worse, let's see how bad it goes badly wrong. Oh, it built. That's usually a good indicator that things aren't terribly wrong. Have I still got the server running? I do. Oh, this should be exciting. Nice! Okay, it's missing a beat because I need to make it go more than once every... Uh <coughs> I need to make it go a bit faster than once every 20 ticks because it means it might miss one but that's not bad I'm quite pleased with that Let's see what happens when it goes through the minutes How's it going to kill a CPU, Gaming Twist? Um, it's only running once a second, so it's once every 20 ticks. I mean, at the moment it is doing a lot of unnecessary options um, that I still need to... Uh, like, it's it's setting bricks it doesn't need to set. Um, so I need to fix that. But otherwise than that, it's uh, it should have minimal impact on the server, I would have thought. Uh, what do you mean, what happened to the bricks, Steve? clock is down there. Oh, sorry, the sign is down there. <laughs> Stand on it in creative mode, that could get painful. Now, the one problem I've noticed is that, oh, it's doing exactly what I asked it to. Ha ha ha! Let me stop and restart and try the uh, the putting the two in yeah I am supposed to be using two materials and what happened Steve is that um, when I put the sign on I hadn't got the bricks behind it so when it read them it read one of them as air which is why it, where the background was air so it was only the four material was set and that was the stone that it was set on so let's do that again. I'm just restarting the server because at the moment I can't st stop. I can't stop the clock. <laughs> you put a countdown clock on your server and kill the CPU. Well, maybe I don't know. I mean, I'm going to find out. So this is now a dead. These are just now dead bricks. They don't do anything. So if I um, take that out. I mean, one of, the, one of the things I should do before this goes anywhere near the down the mineshaft server um, is profile it uh, and make sure that it's not going to damage the performance of the server. But the server's got a lot of other busier things it's been doing. So, right. So now that's stone. So let me get rid of that sign and that stone. I'm going to put a stone up there, and I'm going to put. Um, brick. Let's do quartz. No, we already had, we had a problem with, with that, so let's have brick. And we'll have um, cobble. 
because we had we knew cobble worked. Right, so if I come out here, if I was to put that one to be brick and that one to be cobble, and then down here, not with seeds, they don't help me at all. Uh, put a clock on there. There you go. Now it shows the um, the background in there as well. Obviously I need to fill the rest of it out with the background, so the time renderer needs to do a little bit more work to fill in all the bits that aren't being updated, but but that means I can now custom control the um, all the materials that are being used. I can put the colon in there as well as part of the time renderer. Oh, I'm quite chuffed with that. That looks good. Put the background one back. Not sure what you mean, Haddock. Put the background one. Oh, is it? I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have a number of. I can have a look at a number of different styles for it, um, including putting the background back and also putting the. Because um, this is all going to be filled out. Um, I need to put a one. Uh, block board around the entire thing and fill in all the gaps. That all still needs to be done. Uh, train lover, so I'm doing um, Minecraft development in Java because I fancied it basically. Um, so I'm spamming the log at the moment, so I need to stop doing that. But that's not bad. I'm quite pleased with that. That's not bad at all. So I need to get the rest of the backing in. Encourages the shadows, making it more readable. Okay. Well, I'll do that now. We'll see what that looks like. That's easy enough to do. Right. Um, let me stop the server. And the other thing I will do is get rid of all that logging. That log spam. Because we don't need all that log spam. Set block needs to stop it. Uh, there it is. That's the, that's the line that's doing all of that. So essentially, whenever I do a material 2, I want to punch the Z back one. makes life a little bit more difficult because then I have to also update the... so I've got two layers of blocks to update. Okay, I need to fix that as well. Let's put these in first. I have to say, I think having played with this, I think that teaching kids to make Minecraft plugins would be a great way, within a, within a constrained environment where you're sort of with tasks and so forth, it's a great way of teaching sort of the fun of programming um, in, a, in a world which they're already heavily engaged in. Can I even launch TS? Train lever, I can launch TS and I can play it no problem on here. What I can't do is stream it. So it this, ga this machine will run the game pretty well, even at, at good detail settings. But what it won't then do is, um, if I stream it, it slaughters the frame rate. Because it just hasn't got enough guts to do both at once. So wherever I do a Z plus one... Um, I need to clear Z as well. 
with air. that, get rid of that, and put material.air in there. mesmerizing <laughs> Jimmy Dave, thank you for the follow, much appreciated This is taking too long. should we do be doing a more, a more substantial job of clearing up line of the second row as well but I figure you'll have something in front of it so it doesn't actually matter if there's also something behind it it's untidy but I think it's an optimization that will help with performance and if these are in an enclosed space then it really doesn't matter It'll make the OCD free uh, junkies go mad, I should imagine, but... What they don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> right. Round four. Number <laughs> nice, Stephen. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Number seven. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> on your test today, you were asked to stop at bus stop, and you thought about doing that. <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear. I was like, well I failed my test but I had a bloody good laugh doing it, I'll tell you. <laughs> right. You know, when I started doing this, I had in two minds, I thought, how would it be too distracting and I wouldn't actually be able to to think to get the programming done but it's actually made it really pleasant programming is quite often a fairly um, lonely thing if you like you, it's, if you do it on your own so you can concentrate and uh, this has actually been really interesting Ooh, have we found the end? I do believe we found the end! Right, let's see how we how bad, badly we've broken it, and then we'll come on and start putting in the rest of the clock assembly. Build success, that's what I like to see. So the next thing I think I want to do is add a couple of commands. Once I've got the rest of the, the clock in so that it's sort of a complete assemblage, I think I want to do the commands so that we can start and stop it. You know, you could have just put a square behind and rendered the back background material as air. I hate you, John. <laughs> uh, never mind. Right, let's get rid of all this stuff. Oh, that does look so much better, doesn't it? Oop, that one's not working. Yeah, you're right. The, the 3D effect is so much more um, worth having on that. That's really good. It looks like only one is balked though. Interesting if uh no observation. That bottom right block is always on. Every single digit places the bottom right block. And it's only because one doesn't work that it's not placing the other one. But that's cool. Stephen Jam, yeah, talk to Easily Confused for a land claim. Right, okay, so now I need to get the back of the clock in. And we'll get some commands in at the same time. So, in Time Renderer, when we initialize, I want to um, just render a uh, clock um, base. 
private void render clock base. So I'm going to take a sneaky peek at stealing set block because it's just a bit too handy. See you later, Steve. Oh, I was going to find out what's wrong with digit one. Ah, I always wipe. I never set it. Oh, I've copied and pasted something I shouldn't. So, that should have been x minus 2 is material 2, uh, z plus 1, and material dot a is that one. Because that would have put the block in the background. Yeah, that's fine. That's fixed. Number win. Now, time renderer. Get. I don't need that. Let's get that. Put that in there. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is, uh, at the moment, uh, time up data. Oh, stop. Pain a pain. Is spamming the log as well. We'll comment that out. So, time renderer. So a clock is each digit is three. It's four. So it's three, three plus one. Plus three plus. One plus four plus that. So that's how many digits, or how many blo blocks it is, which is four, seven, eight, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, nineteen, twenty. All right then. Four int i. Equals x i less than equal i less than x plus twenty i plus plus uh, no um, draw x. Don't like using single letter nonsense variable names like i because then they're really really difficult to understand later on. Ah, oh, so time render it doesn't have access to the clock. It must have. Oh, render time is when it's told about the clock. So time renderer, which is created by the this. No, time up data has that. So when time up data is created, scenario. <laughs> Funny, Josh. Um, I want to tell time renderer dot render um, base void render base. X, Y, Z, for material, back material. Set there one scores. That'd 
becomes public so that time updater can do it and then this having set that up should do a time updater dot render base which is going to cause this to happen and at this point set block draw x y z um, plus one with back material for int draw y is y draw y is less than so what are we doing with y? we're going up aren't we? so less than y plus good night haddock custom hitcher why did I get into programming? I've been into programming since I was um, really since I was in early early days of school um, and I used to do programming as a hobby I, I like the fact that I can, can at its heart I can tell these mach fantastic machines computers I can control what they're doing I can make them do what I bend them to my will <laughs> um, and it, that's essentially it's basically just I'm um, I'm just an evil 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 person um, but yeah, I like I like that element of it. You can control what these things are doing. It demystifies everything about them completely. Um, it creates new mystifiers like, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Um, but that's a separate problem. Um, <laughs> so I want to go to y plus... I was just going to put 6 there just to see what happens. Draw y plus plus. And then that goes in there. So I hope that answers your question. Draw y. And that needs to be an M. Right, let's see what that does. It'll success. Most of my career has been software engineering. Um, after a short stint at, uh, as an I, as an, uh, at an ISP or two ISPs, um, I went to British Telecom for just shy of six years, doing C++ and then Java. Then I was doing um, financial security, banking security software in Java, and then C Sharp. Then I went to McFarlane. Um, and I was doing um, call center systems in Java and C Sharp. Am I going to play a game? No, that's why it's on the game dev um, thing, Six Guns, because uh, this machine can't really play games. Well, it could do Minecraft, but... When I get my new games machine, I'll be back to playing games, but until then I thought I'd do something a bit different. Right. Let's do some smashy smash. Right, so, if I put that in there, it should... do <laughs> <laughs> Went the wrong way. <laughs> it's not plus, it's minus. Get it right. So the Y is okay, the X needs to be uh, greater than X minus 20 minus minus. Let's try that. Plugins. 
Never understood Linux where you compiled your own display drivers. Well, to be honest, it's just because that's how... Uh, I mean, you could compile your own display driver for uh, Windows if you had the source for it. Um, there were reasons why you you, you compiled display drivers, but you know, for example, once you get onto NVIDIA cards and the newer ones, they never supplied the source, so you only ever had the binaries for the cards. Well, I, I think so, anyway. So it's very different. Six guns. What happened to the gaming computer? So the one I was I use for the 24-hour stream is borrowed from work, um, and it's my machine. I use it all every day, so it has to stay there. Um, and um, the laptop I was using had to go back again. It was borrowed from work because it was uh, needed for doing demos, which is what it was originally bought for. Uh, and then the other machine I borrowed, which was a demo machine, uh, blew up. Well, it died. It became too unreliable, so I stopped using it. Time, oop, time set day. Uh, it, so I had to stop using it. So, um, end result, nothing to stream on. So I'm buying another machine, though, so... Now I need to write a plugin that will do this for me, don't I? Or just put World Guard on here. Clicky, 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 clicky. Clicky, clicky, clicky. Better. Right. That's better. It needs... The clock itself needs to start one to the right and one up, and then the brick needs to grow accordingly. But that then gives us a base for it, a backing for it. You're in creative, lend me some diamonds. <laughs> well, that's alright. So I need to move the clock right and up. And then I need to make the backing a bit bigger to cope with that. That will then put a one square board around the whole thing. Okay. Which means that needs to go up one. That needs to go one more. That gets the that bit done. That needs to go one to the right. And... Y, uh, y plus 1. That'll move the clock up 1. Time for a giant clock hammer to wipe out old clock fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right, now, I'm quite happy that that's probably going to work, and if it doesn't, I don't care too much. Let's get some... Let's make this stopwatch a bit more controllable. Um, so what I need is, under plugin YML... I'm going to add some commands. So let's just get one command in. And I'm not going to put permissions on it yet. We'll worry about that later. So the first command is going to be uh, DTM start. DTM start um, timer. doesn't need a permission and then the next command is going to be dtm reset um, make it a stopwatch start because we're talking about a stopwatch here stopwatch start uh, dtm sw stop SW reset. Right, so that gives me the three commands that I need. The idea being you do slash in this command. Get your Minecraft name coloured. Yeah, could do. 
Could do. Right, so that has created the commands. What I now need to do is in here, if I have a look at what I did earlier, there is on command. Let me just rip that out of there. And put that in there. Now what I'm going to do here is the first line of the sign is going to be the, the ID of the sign. So um, is event dot get lines I'll get line zero and then having created a stopwatch um, clocks dot put sign ID stopwatch and then create a hash map up here Uh, string to i clock, which is going to be clocks new hash map string to i clock. That needs to be a string, and that needs including. Right. Would this apply to admins on server or the normal users? To be honest, depending on performance. I mean that's going to be the main thing if it's not too bad on performance I might make it to where users can have one or two clocks on their own um, plots um, but there's obviously a concern that you know everyone puts 500 users put 500 clocks on and all of a sudden the server can't do anything else so I will need to figure out what the performance hit is um, and then figure it out from there but I'd like to make it available to everybody because it's a bit of fun Right, must return the type boolean. Excellent. So, on command is executed whenever you do slash blah. Um, which means that in here... I'm effectively going to do... that. Time would still... still. Yep. I'm not even going to give that the response that it probably deserves. <laughs> right, if the command was dtmsw start, then if the uh, not one parameter, then we put that in there. Else if... No. So I've got three commands to do. Is those uh, oops no it's the plugin YML I'm looking for that's the next command I don't like these commands I'm going to change these at some point but they'll they'll get me some of the way to where I want to be so my goal I think for this evening now given we're at quarter past eleven is get these three commands working. so that we can start, stop and reset the timer and then the next time I can start adding the other timers in and redstone functionality right so if we do an SW start then I want to get that sign which is in args 0 so if uh, underscore clocks dot contains key uh, args 0 then, otherwise, send a dot send message uh, chat color dot red uh, time, uh, clock does not exist. Ox zero does not exist. The same is going to apply on all of these. That shouldn't be there. But if it does exist, then I clock um, clocks dot get of zero. Working Big Ben. 
Yeah, I did think about doing an analog clock. Other than as long as you calculate where all of the the hands have got to go, it shouldn't be too bad, to be honest. That's the hard bit. Everything else is I've done it basically. So if clock instance of stop watch clock uh, else. I won't worry about else for the time being. Um, then stop. Uh, stop watch clock. Clock. And then stop watch clock dot. And this is start. Now in here, I do reset, which I haven't implemented yet, and in here, I do stop. So in here, I want a reset, which is the same as initialize, really. I want reset, uh, which will set the time. Ever tried speech program? Do you mean speech recognition or text to speech? The answer is yes, I've done both and got it working really well. I've got a voice recognition system for my model railway. If you look on my YouTube channel, one of the first videos I uploaded many years ago now is a demo of a very early prototype of the software that I was developing. Uh, it's significantly more advanced than that now, but yeah, I got um, full speech recognition working so you can. St uh, drive all the trains, set all the switches, all the junctions and routes on the railway. It's, it's actually really cool. <laughs> Once you get over looking like a tit, frankly. <laughs> Where's the error? There it is. What are you complaining about? Oh, I'm still not returning red true everywhere. You're okay. You're okay. I did also make it work with train sim as well, yep. I really enjoy. I did a lot of work with speech recognition and text to speech with um with the telephony software I used to use. That needs a return. That needs a return. And then if all else fails, I didn't deal with it. Oh, using it for using speech program for code. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, yeah, no, I can't imagine that going well. <laughs> you mean a dictation system? But can it make a brew? Well, you know what? That's what we need to know. Right, so this is going to do all the stopwatchy stuff. Uh, send dot send message chat color dot green. Uh, Stopwatch. Oh, zero has been started. Reset. Stopped. Right. I think we're all good. Let's run it. I think hooking up your coffee machine is uh, an interesting idea, isn't it? It's a nice robotics project. Worthwhile enhancement to uh, humanity. In theory, it shouldn't matter. I should just be able to blow that sign away, put a zero. Oh, I'm going to put um, 
Fred on there now. I should just talk. Oh no, because of course it's all upset. It's all been. So let's do DTM SW stop Fred. Well, that didn't work, did it? What did I do wrong? Start, reset, and start. Excellent! Excellent! Good job! GG! Right, I do now need to uh, trash all of that, but I can't until it's reset. One of the first webcams watching a coffee machine. Yeah, I think there was also one on, a fi on an aquarium as well. Right, so that's done now. So now I need to regenerate that. What twit? Okay. The reason I've split some of the classes out the way I have is that they can be reused. So time renderer can use can be used across all of them. Digit render is used across the is effectively shared across all of them. So the idea is that getting the extra clocks now is a question of getting a relatively small chunk of code done. I am the Terminator. Who keeps falling out of the sky? The mirror is getting more and more time consuming to delete this clock. Hey Ribku, thank you for the host. I trust you had a good stream. Right, so let's put Fred back on, shall we? Oh, there's Fred looking rather splendid, actually. That looks rather splendid. I tell you what, let's DTM SW stop Fred. Yes! Oh, yes! DTM SW reset Fred. Of course, it's not rendering, so because it's stopped. ETM SW start thread. It had actually reset. Now I should be able to DTM SW stop thread at 5 and DTM SW start thread. Of course, the problem there is when I start it, it'll jump straight up to the current time. Oh no, start does actually restart it. Okay, so not quite there, not quite there, but it means that I can now stop Fred. Ooh, ooh, I've just had an idea that will save me some time. Oh, I've had an idea that will save me some time, I have. What is going on with these windows? That's the lock, get down the bottom where you belong. That's not the bottom where you belong. Apparently you're just going to run away and hide now. <laughs> uh, Fred is the name of the timer. Fred is the name of the timer that I created. It means I can have multiple timers. Um, I'm all running independently. So what I thought I could do was a stopwatch I need a clear, which will do time 
timeupdater.clear and in time updater I can do uh, clear which is a time renderer dot clear and passes in those three and then time renderer clear will basically do that uh, less than Z plus one draw Z plus plus put that lot in there in X and Y in Z and this is going to put material dot air in there Build off with each zone having a timer. Well, at the moment, if you look in the build off area, there is um, a giant timer that um, Haddock put in there, and essentially, I'm I'm creating a plug-in version of that timer. His is all done using pistons and redstone and magical wizardry. So that gives me a clear function, which should be cool. That means that I don't have to go and delete them anymore. I just press, I do the clear, which I'll add the function in for. Um, and then in here I need to do a clear mean that I can... Hey Kermish Freak, yes I'm doing, uh, I'm creating some Minecraft plugin, well I'm creating a Minecraft plugin. I started out playing about with it at the weekend and uh, I've just been having a bit too much fun so I thought I would share the experience and let other people share my pain. Um, right, now the problem was that when I did so stop works, start always resets so, I don't necessarily want start to reset, do I? I want reset to reset. However, I do want that to happen so that it's been done at some point. No, start I do want to. So when I reset that, it'll just basically reset it back to zero and keep going. Stop means stop. Start means that. Yeah, okay. No, that is fine. Cheers, Phil. Let us, let us build it and try it. The Minecraft version of Countdown. <laughs> That's built. Stop server. That goes up there, run the server. I was thinking about pause commands, arrogant art. Now obviously at the moment these timers aren't persisted. 
Right, so if I now DTM SW stop thread, DTM SW start thread will reset it. And reset thread should just reset it and carry on going. It does. Excellent. SW stop thread and DTM SW clear thread. Oh, not quite. <laughs> Well, that's not bad. Quite pleased with that for an evening's work, I think. So I've got count up, I've got count down, I've got the current time, I've got to make it relative to where the sign is on the other blocks. So there's still plenty to do. Need sounds. Yeah, I need to figure out how to play sounds at the moment. Um, easily confused. I haven't got that far yet. I'm sure I will. I'm quite pleased with that. Okay, folks, I'm going to call it a night on this. Um, Rubku, you you go ahead and stream however long you want, mate. That's uh, as long as someone's streaming Train Sim, that's cool. Um, so I'm hoping to be back next week, hopefully. Yeah, but usually easily confused. There may well be a um, a way I can send sounds with um, without using a note block, but cause the same API that makes them do that. So um, I'll figure something out. I, I I know it's possible. I just haven't looked at it. So um, there's all sorts of wizardry and trickery going on that you can play with in the API. It's really powerful, actually. <laughs> really, really powerful. Um, very impressed with it. Okay, that's it from me. Thanks very much, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, um, I think I might do this. Uh, I might do this again. Actually, I've been quite enjoying that. Um, I might do it. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Is it Tuesday tomorrow? Yeah, it's Tuesday tomorrow. We'll carry on with some more. Uh, it'll be down the mine shaft on normal on Wednesday. This machine can cope with Minecraft, as you can see. Um, yeah. All right then, folks. Thanks very much, and I will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>